You know what, friends? I think that hot news has been held back. By our gosh dang pillows. Reese always tells me to prop them up. Well, now they're propped right on the ground. I'm done with them, okay? They'll be back next episode. Don't you worry, little tales about it. But you know what we can talk about today? More AMD stuff, because that's what's gonna be in the news. Because, my friend, I just have to admit, I was wrong. I was mistaken. I couldn't see the future clearly. I had an eye on the now, and that spells doom for my predictions. Because the rumor that was floating around that AMD would be unveiling Navi at E3, well, that sounded like malarkey and a farce just a few days ago, but now AMD's announced that they're holding a next G Horizon gaming event at E3. So if you don't remember the rumor, the way it goes is that apparently at Computex, what we're going to get is Zen 2 plus X570 motherboards and just kind of a tease at Navi. And then finally at E3, why are you staring at me? Anyways, and at E3, we're expected to get the unveiling and full launch of Navi. And if you are having a hard time parsing things, Navi isn't those new GPUs that were announced a couple days ago, which is the RX 600 series. Those are expected to be a refresh of Polaris, which it was already the 400 series, then it was the 500 series, then there was the 500X series. Now it's gonna be 600 series. So it's a refresh of 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 a refresh. Navi, however, is supposed to be the RX 3000 series, taking one step up from NVIDIA with their RTX 2000 series and just making it so that AMD has the higher naming number scheme, just like they did with their motherboards with 470 and 370 because it, 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 Intel at the time was on Z270, so they released X370. That's exactly why then Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, and Ryzen 7 to compete with i3, i5, i7. That's what we're expecting. The RX 3070, it's supposed to be the one that they're really pushing out maybe even the 3080, but the 3070 is supposed to be somewhere in the $280 price range and compete with the Vega 64. And it's supposed to be the RX 3070 XT that's supposed to be better than a Vega 64, but the price is supposed to be right. Navi is supposed to be about value, not necessarily the best performance because as we learned from AMD yesterday, they are confirming the fact of something that they already confirmed during another call, but they talked about it yesterday as well. They're confirming that Ryzen 3000 and Navi are gonna be launching in Q3 of this year. But one of the interesting things about that is that Navi is partnered with the Radeon 7. So it doesn't look like they're looking to replace the Radeon 7 at this point. Radeon 7 looks like it's gonna sell through the remainder of the year, and they're probably only gonna give us some mid-tier Navi stuff, even though one could argue Radeon 7 is mid-tier in the current setup. Not many people would because $700 is an expensive mid-tier, but I would argue it because you got the 2080 Ti and the Titans above it. So it's mid-tier, okay? How does it feel not to be able to afford a mid-tier card, huh? Huh? I'm memeing because I, like, I... How do you do, fellow kids? Anyways, so it looks like even though we might be getting announcements and unveilings of Ryzen 3000 and Navi at Computex and E3 respectively, it does seem like at least according to AMD in two different places in the past couple of weeks, they will be officially on sale in Q3, which just means July. So we'll have to wait a month from the time that they're unveiled, which actually isn't too bad, especially since Radeon 7 was announced at CES, which was the beginning of January, and then it was launched February 7th. So not too much of a wait, especially if you're just looking to get a decent value on specific stuff. But let's go ahead and talk more about the stuff that we're expecting to see at Computex because there is another AMD X570 chipset motherboard that has been pictured, the CVN X570 Gaming Pro. It has another active cooling heatsink on the chipset itself, as well as a 10-phase VR which just looks like it's gearing up to be something that's pretty hot and heavy with 16 cores. That's the current rumor. And then also the chipset, as we mentioned in a previous episode, is supposed to be really hot and that's why it requires active cooling. But any company that's gonna build a budget X570 looks like they're gonna have thermal issues with their chipset, which is something that hasn't happened in a long time. But you know what else hasn't happened in a long time? Good value on high core count CPUs. And in fact, that's never happened. And if you think I'm talking about eight cores, 
anymore is that's not high core count anymore. That's middle of the road pleb stuff at this point because there has been a benchmark leak of the 12 core Zen 2 Ryzen 3000 processor that's supposed to be coming out. And oh, it's a doozy. 3.4 gigahertz base is what it says and a 3.35 gigahertz turbo. That doesn't seem right. That seems a little backwards. So 3.7 is the official turbo. But anyways, it looks like it has a higher IPC than the current 1920X that's on mark on the market. And even though it might not be clocked as well as we're expecting, it's still an engineering sample and it beats the 1920X. So if it comes in cheaper than what the 1920X is currently selling for, that would be pretty great. But it's gonna be hard to beat because the 1920X, as far as I remember, was super cheap. Yeah, $314 is how much a Threadripper costs at this point. So they have to come in pretty good. Like you can buy a 19, 20, you can buy a 12 core 24 thread for $315 right now. That's like, that's nothing. That's, oh wow, they're gonna be cheap. AMD is already preparing those price drops. But you know who else is preparing for AMD? Motherboard manufacturers. Biostar has released their BIOS update to support Ryzen 3000 processors for their AIM4 motherboards. So that's coming out. And something else that's coming out that probably shouldn't be and is a huge disappointment to everybody everywhere unless you're HP, in which case you're clapping for yourself saying, yes, we did a great job. It's the world's first dual screen gaming laptop. You might remember that I, I believe it was Computex last year, Asus unveiled like their ZenBook, which had the bottom was a, a touchscreen and the top was a touchscreen as well. That was okay, kind of get it. It's like a double tablet situation. It at least makes more sense than the stupid foldable laptops. But anyways, this one is just a gaming laptop with the giant screen, but then it has a six inch touchscreen in front of the keyboard where you know you could put some like cooling space slots to make sure that your gaming laptop can actually stay cool. But no, no, you have a six inch 1080p touchscreen for, as, as this article says it, uh, message your friends in WeChat, WhatsApp, or browse Spotify, watch Twitch or YouTube. Why? Just no, no. I, I guarantee you the price of this laptop is gonna be so expensive that you could buy a cheaper laptop with the same specs and buy a portable monitor on top of that so that you could have two actual screens of real size and not one that you have to go like this over because it's in the middle of your freaking laptop and not something that's actually visible to you because if you raise it up, it's gonna block the bottom portion of your actual laptop screen. Who thought this was a good idea? You did, friends. You asked for this. This is the future that you're living in thanks to the choices that you made. <laughs> but speaking of you, Google thinks that Google Translate is just kind of, it's missing that certain uh, je ne sais quoi, uh, you, it's missing you because they un unveiled the Google Translatatron, which is not only something that's going to translate for you, but it's going to put the translation into the speaker's voice and cadence. So that's creepy. It's gonna use your own voice to say something in a foreign language that you wouldn't normally say but I guess it would probably speak Spanish better than I would with the correct pronunciation instead of me sounding like I have a lisp when I speak Spanish for whatever reason. It's just something my mouth does, okay? I just, I took seven years of Spanish when I was in school and I just can't do it properly. Leave me alone. Donde esta la biblioteca? Me llamo T-Bone la araña discoteca. I can't roll my R's either. That's a community reference for anybody who didn't get it. And this is a reference to OnePlus's camera, the pop-up camera, in case you're thinking that it's a weak little baby piece of crap that it'll pop out and then you just slap it and then it flies off. No, OnePlus came out with a video showing that it can lift 49 pounds of cement. Yes, they put a wire on the OnePlus 7 pop-up camera and then it just, it lifted the cement in the air. It's miraculous. Your phone can support more than you think as long as your butt doesn't provide more than 49 foot-pounds pressure of torque. That's not how that conversion works, but I said it anyways. And you know what else I'm gonna say anyways? Quantum computers. Yeah, scary future, my friends. They're getting better all the time. You think that we're supposed to worry about AI and the Terminator, but no, my friends, the future is quantum because D-Wave has unveiled a brand new, higher performance quantum computer, the 2000Q. So the 2000Q is supposed to be a quantum computer with a lower noise qubit environment, and it's supposed to have up to 25 times higher performance in certain applications. My friends, you thought Moore's Law was dead? No, it just transferred 
over into qubits. Instead of doubling transistors every year, now we're doubling the qubits. And we've got lower noise requirements for qubits. And so quantum computers qubiting, cuberting their way to your hearts. That's the end of hot news. Let me know what you thought of anything that we talked about. AMD going to be at E3. Exciting? Yes or no? Do you want us to go? Probably not. I don't have the money. I can't fly there after going to Computex. And Los Angeles is expensive. Probably not going to happen. But you know what? You know what is going to happen? Your love for us. Because you love me. And I want you to support us if you want to by picking up some disc plates at displate.com forward slash UFD Tech Official. Dope metal prints. My friends, we have those hanging up there, but we also have easy ones over there. You just slap a paper onto the wall, put a magnet on that paper, and then just mount the disc plate onto the wall. You can swap them out if you have a whole bunch of them. You can create whatever ambiance in your room environment that you want to. And especially if you use UFD as a coupon code, you save 15% off. Do it. And if you want to support us directly, you can do so over patreon.com forward slash UFD tech. Just give us a little bit of support and uh, let us know that you appreciate the work that we're doing as content creators doing news in the world for you. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. This is Hot News. Never mind. I love you too. Bye.